Well, hello everyone. Jarrell here. I'm the developer of the Silver Falls games. Welcome to Sun Grant, and I just wanted to do a bit of a check-in today to let you know how development is going on our current lineup of games that are coming out this year. So a couple days ago, we announced we will be launching seven titles across the Wii U and 3DS eShop. That's pretty exciting. Uh, a lot of these are titles that we had originally planned to bring to the 3DS and the Wii U, and uh, we uh, saw that it made better business sense to move them onto the Switch, but over the past week or so after Nintendo has announced the ending of sales on the Wii U and 3DS eShop, and we saw that a lot of people uh, were a bit bummed out about that, um, and that they uh, ex expressed demand and excitement for games. I thought, you know what, it'd be, it'd be really cool to do this for people, so we're taking the games off the Switch, and we're putting them back onto the 3DS and the Wii U eShops. So, uh, before we uh, jump uh, into whatever it is we're talking about today with our um, uh, development and, and uh, our check-in, uh, let's all take a sip of our hot apple cider and enjoy a nice, relaxing, uh, warm beverage now. My tip to you is to take maybe half a teaspoon of cinnamon sugar. Go ahead and drop that into your apple cider. You're going to have yourself a nice drink. Fantastic. You know, I wouldn't mind a bit of fresh lemon in there as well. I think that'd be very nice. So uh, thank you to everyone for your support and for um, expressing your excitement for the games. This is an insane undertaking. This is... It's a it's huge. It's a huge amount of work um, getting white inside its umbra uh, finished and submitted uh, to Nintendo before the cutoff period um, for when they stop accepting new games. That was going to be a huge undertaking. But I saw an opportunity to bring some excitement and positivity to people. So I thought, you know what, I'll get these other games done as well. So now my life is entirely dominated by getting these games done and submitted on time. That's pretty exciting. It's filled up the rest of my year with a, a, a pretty demanding workload now, even more so than it was before. But I feel that it's worth it. The amount of excitement and, and enjoyment that I see people getting from the announcement, it's, it's totally worth it. You know, people are, are really looking forward to it. So I'm, I'm absolutely certain it's worth it. So for me, it's a huge amount of work. The way that I'm managing that is I tend to uh, have one uh, main title that I focus on, which is right now, it's White Inside Its Umbra, and I have smaller satellite projects that I can work on during loading times. So when I have to deploy a, a game build and run it on hardware, that can take a while. It can take 15 to 20 minutes for that build to load, uh, and then to install and then run on the hardware. So uh, what I do is I have multiple workstations and I will start deploying uh, White Inside Its Umbra to run on hardware and then on my other workstations I'll work on the other games. So um, at this point I'm not really just working on one project at a time. While I'm working on one thing uh, I'm able to think about and plan the other games as well. So as soon as I find an opportunity for that I will go and get the work done on those games whether that's uh, creating uh, sprite work, whether it's uh, creating assets for the, the UI, the heads-up display, programming bits of the heads-up display, uh, programming database stuff, creating um, the actual in-game assets and building environments, where I can find 15 to 20 minutes in between the main project, I'll go and work on that as well. Also to, to uh, sort of mix up the day and to refresh my brain, sometimes I'll just hop onto another project for an hour or two if it feels like one project is grinding way too much. Uh, and that's about it. That's what I'm working on right now. It's going well. I can feel a bit of um, a bit of a, a, a drag uh, on my energy levels at the moment because I have been pushing very hard since I'd say the, the second week of January. I, I really full-time went into White Inside Its Umber, so I've been pushing very hard since then. So I am feeling a bit of a drag, but I just have to make it through until the end of submission period. And that's all it comes down to is you just, just got to get the work done. So uh, people have been asking um, what White Inside Its Umbra is similar to. Is it similar to a zombie U? Um, what does it play like? So my answer is it's not similar to anything. It's very difficult to describe this game. And people say, why don't you just put it 
on the Switch, put it on the other consoles, uh, it won't work on the other consoles. It's 100% designed to only work on the Wii U. It's hard to describe it without letting people play the actual game, and the testers that have played it, their reaction has been very strong, and they say, wow, there's never been a game like this. It's really cool. Uh, and the reason being is that the game doesn't treat your controller like a video game controller, and the game doesn't treat itself like a video game. Uh, White Inside Its Umbra treats your game controller and your interface, it treats it as an actual object that exists within the context of the story. So your gamepad, uh, the game treats it as if it is a smart device that exists in Silver Falls. And it treats your Wiimote, in the context of the game, it's referred to as a satellite, uh, and that is wirelessly connected to your gamepad. There are two devices that are paired wirelessly, and the game treats it as if they both exist in the context of the story. Um, and so the game is designed to invite you to feel like you are there in that particular location. It never says, you know, oh, this is this button, this is that button. It treats it as if you are actually there. So. There is no video game controller uh, interface between you and the game, uh, and that's why it can't work on other consoles, because no other console can have the gamepad and Wiimote set up. Um, uh, people have suggested, oh, why don't you just create a smartphone app that connects it to a newer console like the Switch or, or whatnot. Um, and I have thought about that, and the reason why that won't work is there's a very particular connection uh, psychologically that we have to our smart devices. They're very uh, mundane and normal. We understand what our, our we got a little close there. We understand what these things are, you know. Um, they're quite boring. We know they're, they're a normal part of our lives. They're mundane. We know that they're a smartphone. We know exactly what they do. They're very uh, connected to our reality. We know what they can and can't do. They're not very fun in terms of an engagement and an ima imagination level. There's no room left for imagination when it comes to a smart device, a smartphone. We know what that is. We're connected to it very closely. We know what it is. When it comes to the gamepad uh, in terms of its use as a video game controller, it has the appeal of imagination uh, in much the way that when you hand a, a, a small child like a a space gun or a laser gun, you know, they can run around the yard, they can pretend to be a space ranger, they can pretend to be a cowboy, and their imagination builds that world for them, and they have a connection of creativity to that item. And they think, bang, 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 pow, 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 pow. That's fun. If you were to hand a small child a real gun, that's not fun anymore. That's a real gun. Uh, and everyone around them would know, that's a real gun. This isn't fun. It's not funny. You know exactly what a gun can do. You do not know exactly what a toy gun can do because the capability of that item comes entirely down to the imagination and creativity of the person who's using it. And that is the connection that we have to the gamepad controller is that it's designed to play into your sense of creativity and imagination to make you wonder and feel, what else can this thing do? Uh, and it invites you to try to imagine what this thing can do if I were to create an app that works through your smartphone and that connects to the Switch, that sense of wonder and imagination can't exist. It doesn't exist because of the connection we have to our smartphone. Uh, and that's why uh, Wii U, a white inside its umber, will never, ever be ported beyond the Wii U. Unless there's some future game console that has another video, uh, that has another screen built into the controller in this way. Uh, it's not going to be ported. Uh, I want this to be a special game for Wii U owners. I want, I'm a Wii U owner. Look, we all deserve a W, all right? We deserve an exclusive game that's just for us that, that we can say, yeah, all right, this is our thing. Um, no one else can have it. It's designed to show exactly what the Wii U can do. Uh, and that's why I'm passionate and excited about it. Um, and people are saying, well, I'm going to miss out. Um, I'm sorry about that, uh, but I either create a game that is worse because I want to port it to other consoles, or I create a game that's as creative and 
as great as it can be because I've made it for a particular hardware. So in this situation, uh, I've decided to prioritize uh, this incredible opportunity that we're not we're not going to have another opportunity like this to create a game like this. Um, it's just unlikely uh, that we'll ever get you know with this sort of wireless second screen again. If we do in the future, um, hey, that's going to be very exciting, you know. But I thought what's more important now is taking the opportunity that we're not probably ever going to get again. I do have other games. Uh, in development for the future, and I hope that people will be interested about those. I'm just as passionate about creating interesting experiences in those games as well, especially for the Switch. But for the Wii U, this is our special thing. Um, and now, uh, I'd like to share... Um, the other day, I, was it yesterday? Hmm. I posted a uh, reveal screenshot for uh, Silver Falls Vicarious Brothers, which will be on the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, Shazam. Uh, yeah, this is a screenshot of the game. I'm still building the environment, so this is just a testing environment, but it shows you the presentation uh, and the visual uh, uh, aesthetic of the game. So we have a fun little monster there, um, and we have a sort of your your stat status window uh, there. You have left brother and right brother. So the game is titled Vicarious Brothers. Your party consists of two brothers, left brother and right brother. So I won't really want it to lean into the inspiration of the Virtual Boy. And you had the left control and the right control on the Virtual Boy. Uh, and so the uh, idea and design behind Vicarious Brothers is I wanted to lean into that and think, okay, you control the left brother with the left D-pad and the left trigger, and then the right brother with the right D-pad and the right trigger. and um, the story um, leans into uh, that as well. So uh, I'm a, a huge RPG fan, uh, especially JRPGs. And so in this game, it um, doesn't go heavy into the RPG stats, um, but there's equipment. You have uh, a weapon, armor, and tools. Uh, the game is sort of like a survival horror RPG. You explore a big, sprawling, spooky mansion. There's a lot of different enemies that you'll fight um, with your left brother and right brother. And um, there, there's exploration. There's there's um, a lot that you can get with um, you know like ultimate weapons and, and skills. And the battle system works uh, based on a sort of paper scissor rocks uh, element system, except it's literally paper scissor rock. Uh, certain enemies uh, will be susceptible to either paper scissor or rock, and they'll be resistant to the other. And then the left brother. Um, uh, has uh, an affinity so they can deal more damage with a certain element. And the right brother has uh, um, uh, an affinity for paper, scissor, rock as well, and he's able to deal more damage with certain elements as well. The battle system is sort of hybrid turn-based uh, in that you have a, a sort of a, a meter that builds up if you don't take action, but you can just spam your actions and keep taking actions, but your actions will be weaker. If you let your meter build up for your character, then their act resulting action uh, will be stronger. So uh, I hope you look forward to that. And we also posted a reveal screenshot for Silver Falls Gaiden. Uh, and so uh, with Gaiden on the Wii U, uh, you can play with up to five players, actually. You see four here in the screenshot. Uh, you see Holt, Annalise, Moss, and Maverick from Three Down Stars, and they're being surrounded by enemies. I've just posed that, you know, I, I just wanted to create a screenshot uh, using the environments and, and the assets. So, uh, But this is a situation that can occur in the actual game. And so with this, you'll explore a huge open world environment. Uh, you'll collect resources together, wood, stone, uh, etc., and you'll be able to build uh, different structures. So it's uh, basically, actually, can I just, I'll just move this. How about that? Let's just go like that. Is that working? Cool. Fantastic. So in a way, you're sort of building your, your own ultimate fort clubhouse, you know, with your friends. So, uh, I want to keep the screen clear of clutter. Uh, and so I don't really want life bars and things that are distracting, um, visually on the screen. So the life, uh, meters and that give you your health readout and whatnot, that, uh, will stay on the gamepad. 
so the players, uh, one person can have the gamepad sitting in front of them, or maybe um, all the players can huddle together and have have the gamepad sitting on a coffee table so they can glance down and look at, you know, see what their health is like. Um, the only UI that appears on the TV screen in terms of gameplay is when each player brings up their own menu so that they can view uh, their resources, their items, and their weapons, uh, and they can sort out their inventory. But in terms of health and all that, I'd like to keep that uh, off the screen. I think it makes it a bit more immersive, and it feels like you're out there on this uh, cool adventure with your friends. So you have four players that can use uh, Wiimote, uh, Classic, uh, Classic Pro, Nunchuck, uh, the Pro Controller, um, and there you there is an option where a fifth player can join and also use the gamepad. So you can either have five people playing, or you can have it what I call grandpa mode or uncle mode, and you can hand the gamepad to a grandpa or uncle, and then they can use the touch screen to help assist. So they don't necessarily have to run around, but they can still uh, play the game and help. Uh, the build and fight enemies and, and collect resources. So, um, yeah, that's that's uh, all I wanted to cover uh, for the time being. I don't want to just chuck a whole bunch of information at you, but we do have uh, a lot to share in terms of um, Ghoul Busters, which is going to be a Game Boy style side scrolling action game. And then we have Guardians and Metal Exterminators, which is an RPG action uh, dungeon crawler. And then we also have Gaiden, Deathly Delusion Destroyers, which is coming to the 3DS. So I'll like to hold off on details for that for a while. Uh, but uh, what I can say, and I've mentioned it a couple times before, is that you play that game holding the 3DS uh, vertically, like a book, and you use the touchscreen to play. But there will also be a, a secondary game um, included in Gaiden, Deathly Delusion Destroyers for the 3DS. It was a cancelled concept that made it pretty far into development um, and things just didn't work out with the development kit um, and then we moved on to developing for the switch but i thought this is a pretty fun opportunity to, to give people something cool uh, to to celebrate the 3ds with so I'm, i've included a scrapped game uh, that's built hidden into um, deathly delusion destroyers i couldn't make it its own title because i am no longer able to register new game codes with uh, Nintendo, so I thought I'll take whatever I can. And I'm gonna jam it right up all up in there and fill that full of video game juice. So that's about it. I better get back to work. Uh, I'm finishing up uh, creating all the extra uh, light gun arcade shooting stages and missions for White Inside Its Umbra, and uh, I'll be doing a bit more work on Guardians and Metal Exterminators and Vicarious Brothers today. Uh, I hope you'll check in next time. I'll talk a bit more about uh, Undertakers, the port for the Wii U, and uh, a bit more about Gaiden for Wii U. Thanks very much for your support. I appreciate all of you. Uh, if I haven't got to your messages, it's because I want to give you a genuine response. I don't want to just rush through and put a generic, oh, thank you. Uh, and I've just been um, focused on trying to get uh, uh, White Inside Its Umbra finished and submit it, so I'm, I'm just hyper-focused on that. I don't want to give you a, a crappy, insincere response. So I'll try to get to your messages that I haven't got back to. I'll try to get that today. I think my dog wants something. I better, uh, better go check on my dog. Anyway, enjoy your apple cider. Take care of yourselves. See you next time.